All right, so a lot of people ask me, you know, what's the process of buying a car? You know, do I have a car or do you recommend buying a car? So, you know, let me share with you my personal views and opinions and what I know. So when you are in the military, right, and you're living in a military area, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of businesses out there that are targeting specifically uh, military personnel. Right? I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing. You know, some people have your best interests at heart. Uh, they want to help people, you know, get whatever they want. But there are also people that don't have your best interests at heart and they have their own best interests at heart, which is money, right? Because to them, you are a walking, you know, dollar sign, right? So, you know, I've seen it to the degree of, you know, I was just walking home one day and, you know, there were people, shady looking people out there handing them their business cards saying, hey, buy a car, buy a car. You know, and I just took out it and I just threw it out. Um, so you when you're in the military, you will hear a lot. You will definitely hear a lot of people, you know, getting scammed, getting screwed over, you know, purchasing a car that was too good to be true. They buy it for, you know, X amount of dollars and it turns out to be a complete lemon where you know they sometimes buy a car it looks great right because they chromed it you know it looks all nice it looks all brand new f new looking and it turns out it was in a flooded area the car was totally rusted in the inside but on the outside they painted over it so it makes it look good and so uh you know they were stuck with that car because they signed the contract and everything and they didn't really know too much about cars and that's one of the things right when you're 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and you don't, you haven't really purchased a car before. I'm not really into cars too myself. So when it comes to car buying, I don't know. When I look at a car, as long as it runs, goes from point A to B, that's all that matters to me, right? So if you don't know a lot about cars like me, what I recommend and what your chain of command is probably going to recommend is if you're looking at a vehicle and you're very interested in whether you're going to a used dealership whether you're going to a new dealership um, or you're just buying it from Joe Schmo off the street you know bring somebody within your chain of command ask either you know your first class or chief or somebody who's much older than you who have more experience with cars who know more about cars and say like hey you know chief or hey petty officer can you come with me i'm i'm interested in purchasing this vehicle but you know i don't know too much about vehicles you know i don't know if, how an engine is supposed to sound i don't know how the brakes are supposed to be hey can you come with me and check this vehicle out check this contract out you know check the paperwork out make sure that i'm not getting screwed over make sure i'm not paying you know crazy amount of interest every single month and you know p they will help you right that's why your chain of command is there so you know process that you can take is either purchasing a used car from a you know person that you meet off the street which I know, I've seen some people do that way and it worked out for them right or also buy a used car from a dealer which also works out for them um, or buy a used uh, new car right um, the reason why I personally don't have a car and I personally don't recommend uh, you buying a car is um, personally for me uh, you know I work 12 13 hours each day so number one i don't have a lot of time to like go out and stuff like that let's say i bought a car for let's say five thousand dollars right it's going to last me like three to four years you know i can't justify a five thousand dollar worth of use within my time in the military you know number one i'm a very introverted person and i'm, I'm not very social right i don't really go out a lot you know go to parties and clubs or whatever the case may be now I have seen you know practical uses for having a vehicle for example uh, I've seen somebody on if it's like a three-day weekend so Friday Saturday Sunday off they would put in a paperwork for out-of-bounds shit which is another it's a fancy word for hey uh, it's a paperwork telling the chain of command hey I'm going to be uh, out of bound the normal traveling distance so from your command it might be like 100 miles so if you exceed that you tell your chain of command hey 
I'm going to this location. It's like 500 miles away. I'm just letting you know. So if I have an accident, you guys aren't freaking out saying like, hey man, this guy is like 500 miles away. What's the deal? Right? So they do that and then they go home for the weekend. They drive for like five, six hours and then come back home, uh, come back to work uh, in the beginning of the week. Right? So I've seen a practical use that way. Uh, so they can see their family much more often compared to somebody who doesn't have a vehicle, right? And, you know, you don't want to purchase a train ticket like an Amtrak, $100 there and back, or you know, a plane ticket. So it's much more convenient to have a vehicle to get from point A to point B. And also, uh, if you want to take advantage of anything else the military has to offer, for example, like free, you know, medical stuff or free... Uh, free classes uh, online, uh, free classes or like educational training that they have for free or any sporting events, marathons or whatever the case may be for around your area. You know, it's easy, you know, your command might ne not necessarily tr uh, provide that transportation for you. Uh, so if you have your own vehicle, you know, you can just kind of get there on your own. So that's uh, very convenient, right? So... What you don't want to do is, you know, I've seen some of the worst people who purchased a vehicle I've seen are, you know, number one, I knew this guy, uh, he didn't have a license and he purchased a vehicle, right? And he didn't even know really how to drive. He, he drove like two to three times. And he didn't really, he didn't have a vehicle. He wasn't really familiar. He wasn't really confident in driving. And then he purchased a vehicle. And I ended up having to teach this guy, like, you know, hey, you know, how to park and how to drive and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's another person that I know, like, she's scared to drive, but she purchased a vehicle. I was like, man, why did you, what was the point of that? Right? But you know, I could go on and on with that, but. Uh, if you are, you know, seriously considering purchasing a vehicle, you know, look at the opportunity cost. Look at, you know, where you could be using that money uh, later on down the road or at a present moment, whatever the case may be for you. Um, just make sure you can justify a use for it. So if you're going to purchase a vehicle for $10,000, it's a new vehicle. You know, can you justify a $10,000 worth of use within your four, five, or six years in the military? All right? So make sure you can justify your purchase. All right? Make, just making sure it's not an irrational decision saying like, hey, just because I have money in the bank, I'm going to purchase a vehicle. All right? You don't want to do that. All right? So thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great Navy day.